What's up, you sick motherfuckers? Welcome to another episode of Kruger's Corner. I'm Mike Kruger, joined with producer Todd. What's up? And uh, we got another two episodes of Freddy's Nightmares we're going to be reviewing tonight. So first up is episode 13, Deadline. And in this one, a washed-up newspaper editor is given the story of a lifetime. However, he soon, fi- he soon finds out that the newspaper tells the future after seeing an article about him committing suicide. Uh, all right, so I, I did really get into this story um, through, like, the first half. Like, I-, I was really interested just having the angle of this guy that really wants to be a journalist, but he's a he's an editor for a newspaper company and he's trying to investigate this story, even though, you know, the, everybody's telling him not to, uh, exactly. I was really interested in that. And I also like, you know, the various hallucination scenes we got, like that one chick ripping out his heart was pretty cool. And then that other scene of the mob skinning that one dude's tattoo off. Uh, no. that was pretty, that was pretty badass too. Um, uh, the one thing that really kind of put a sour taste in my mouth though, was like, the 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 ending of his you know his story uh before we move on to the second half it just i don't know i felt it was a little lame the way peter died and uh it, it was also just kind of confusing how it all happened um and then the second half of this episode just completely fucking lost me i mean the stupid love story going on uh, with Emily and the guy in her dreams, I, I wasn't into it at all. And by the end, I was clinging for life because I was really uh, not having a good time. Uh, so overall, and all, one thing I'll also say is that that the Freddy uh, little segments that popped up in this weren't really that great either. So overall, like it's one of the weaker episodes. I didn't absolutely hate it because of most of the first half of the episode, but the second half I just thought was really shitty and one of the shittier second half of the episodes that we've gotten but uh maybe you like this one todd what about you no you're uh, you you nailed it like the first and that's some of these and i know this will come up more than once that like we'll get half we really love and then just stop caring yeah um and this is one of those unfortunately because i did like the first half yeah um and then it just loses me also in the second one yeah, the uh, the journalist guy was super likable too, and yeah. like that angle, I, I I always like that angle where it's a guy not you know he 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 doesn't have the job he wants, but he's working the shitty job, and ends up doing the job he wants while working the job like that. That was that was a cool angle they had at it, and like I just wish they would have wrapped up that portion of the story a little bit better because it right. was it it really was kind of confusing. Um, and the second half didn't do anything to, you know, help that confusion either. Um, yeah, this one was directed by Michael Lang. He really doesn't have like any horror credits. I mean, he did some X Files, some okay. Buffy the Vampire Slayers, um, but like he's a TV director, like everything. Mm-hmm. If, like I don't think he has one feature. Well, maybe he has one feature from 2017, but like he television. Yeah. Um, he did Red and Meth, if anyone remembers that. Stripes. Red Meth. Red and Meth, the Method Man and Red Man show. Oh, I thought you said Red Meth. I was like, <laughs> what is this new shit on the streets? <laughs> he, he did some Hercules. Um, ooh, Weird Science. I like that show. But yeah, oh, American Gothic, another anthology show. But yeah, all TV, everything yeah. TV. Yeah, I, I, I wish I could have more nice to say about this one, but. Uh, yeah yeah it was just it's it's definitely one of the weaker ones and i i looking online i feel like a lot of other people agree with that too but uh all right well enough on that one uh let's just rate this episode and move on to the next one so uh for me i was tossed up between a two and a two and a half uh but i think because of how much i did enjoy uh the first half of the episode with the uh editor uh, i'll give it a two and a half out of five say it's about average yeah, I, I I can't give anything any any different rating. It is, it's average. I mean, if we're averaging out the two halves of the episode, yeah, we get a two and a half. <laughs> yeah. All right. So moving on to now, episode fourteen, black tickets, and in this one, a young couple elope in search of freedom, but find themselves trapped in Springwood. 
So I was really, really excited about this episode J- just for the sure fact that the, uh, watching this on Screenbox, we got this like little preview uh, of the episode oh, right before the episode happened. And this shit looked like it was about to be like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I was fucking losing my <laughs> shit. I was just like, oh, fuck, this is this is going to be one of them. Uh we didn't quite get Texas Chainsaw uh, but, amount of badassery, but Bill Mosley showing the fuck up. I was <laughs> I, I was enthralled, uh, and like I'm to be honest with you, the whole story in the beginning when they were in the ho- the uh, hotel setting, I thought that was really interesting. I wanted that to just be the whole story, you know, this couple getting stuck at this you know hotel with a bunch of hillbilly weirdos and have them having a, a, a jacuzzi filled of, with piranhas and shit and the snakes in the bed. Like I just wanted to see this whole, I don't know, fun house hotel type of scenario play out. Unfortunately, that is not what we fucking got, uh, and it, that really really sucked for me because. Uh, once the couple goes and finally settles down in the town, uh, I found myself just clock watching through the whole thing. I really didn't care about, you know, this dramatic struggle of this couple trying to decide if they, you know, want a kid or not. Like I, I that did nothing for me. And, uh, it really just sucks. Cause I was so excited. You know, the first half of the episode, I was really into this, you know, this hotel and these, shady characters especially bill mosley being one of them it's but, uh, it's funny because you know i mean this literally has like one of the biggest movie stars in the world and you're you know you've only mentioned bill mosley so oh, i'll just yeah. throw it out there it also has a young brad pitt cliff booth himself it did what the fuck? oh yeah he's our lead you didn't realize that oh no i didn't oh sh- okay well then that's why you didn't mention it <laughs> that, that's funny yeah our our lead rick that's a uh, that was young brad pitt that's fucking hilarious, actually. <laughs> now you now you have yeah, to go that, back and see it. Yeah, and I, I, you'll I, see it. I'm sure like now that I know I'll see it. I just I wasn't yeah. it's funny because I I recognize Marissa uh Hargitay, like right. immediately. <laughs> sure, but, I remember that. I mean, to be fair, I've seen her face probably a lot more than I've this seen Brad Pitt. This is true. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I'm a law and order SVU diehard. <laughs> Brad, Brad Pitt, I'm not uh, I'm not like hey he's not if, if cliff booth is watching this he's gonna be a little pissed off I'm just <laughs> sorry cliff hey i like inglorious bastards that's about it though oh no what's like, upon a time in hollywood I, I haven't watched it yet. oh my god i fucking love them <sighs> all right sorry <laughs> but then again i love all of his stuff uh, well all of well, I, I tend to, too. I just I haven't seen every single thing i think the only one i wasn't crazy on was hateful eight uh, oh, you know what? You, I, it depends on which version you watched, but I probably watched the well, I, version. Well, the long version, it's so much more to it, but it's yeah. like, and I think it's the comparisons to the thing, not necessarily the creature. Well, of course, there isn't, but like the yeah. the paranoia, the I, yeah, the paranoia and the isolation, thing. yeah. yeah. So I, I yeah, give it another try. Try one of the longer. Try the the novel, the one that's broken up into chapters. Yeah, one of these days I gotta ju- I gotta just sit down and catch up on the Quentin Tarantino stuff I haven't mm-hmm. seen. But uh, but yeah, but enough of Quentin Tarantino though. What did you think of Black Tickets, uh, Todd? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, first thing I got because it was the first thing on my notes, and you already brought it up. The the little tra- the little preview, mm-hmm. the coming up. God, that took me back. I remember watching those and getting so excited. Dude, I would, I would have been freaking the fuck out if I saw this one pop up just randomly while watching TV. Right. And that's what used to happen. It was just um I wish they had that on every one of these episodes because yeah, that would awesome. Cool. Um, I know some are out there, but yeah, those are just take me back. Um I do like this episode. Um, I mean, yeah, having Mosley in there doesn't hurt. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it, I mean, I wouldn't say I disliked it. I just, I just, that, that first like 15, 25, 20 ish minutes, like was really strong. And then when they're arguing and trying to figure out, you know, if they want to have a baby or not, that wasn't like (laughs) as interesting for me. I was like, (laughs) but uh 
But yeah. Oh, I, no. oh god. No, I was gonna say I do want to bring up the director, George Kaxender. He's there's not really much that he's notable like that you like anyone will really know. But I do want to point out he's he directs he directed three episodes of Freddy's Nightmares. Oh wow. Um the first one being uh, the Bride War Red okay. and Black Tickets. Did we do Dreams Come True yet? I don't think so. Yeah, I think that's an upcoming one. So he does have one more. Cool. Yeah, no, de- definitely not, you know, not one of the weakest, but fucking Texas Chainsaw Hotel would have been fucking a little bit cooler. Yeah. All I'm saying. Now, if, if you didn't have that little spot at the beginning, think you it, it didn't give you that hope. You think you would have liked it better? I mean, it was more than a little bit of hope because Bill, I mean, he's in more than one scene. Like, it looked like we're about to find out this family that's running this hotel the way the story played out. So I was, I, I would have been, I mean, I don't think I would have liked the episode as much if it didn't have that. But okay. um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have been into this episode if it was just them figuring out uh, their struggle with, if they want to have a kid or not, but uh, the, the, that shit was cringe as fuck to me. Like when they're, <laughs> when, when they're like, "Oh, you think you're ready to be a parent?" Like I was, yeah. oh, I, was I was cracking up. <laughs> I was like, "I'm fucking over this shit." Um, uh, but anyways, uh, why don't we rate this one and get the fuck out of here? So uh, for me, I'm a three out of five. I'm the exact same thing. I'm a three. Right. Um. Yeah, this was definitely not winning Brad Pitt in the awards. The bump, <laughs> the bump up, uh, I, it was bumped up to a three after seeing Freddy just being in a mechanic outfit. Oh. Fucking work another car. That shit was funny. When they have the good little, you know, vignettes in between, it, it really makes a difference. Somebody needs to just do a super cut of just all the vignettes. <laughs> I, think, I, I think that's coming. Oh, stay tuned. Uh, not, I didn't say from here, but I think. Uh, Stay. T- it will pop up somewhere. Stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, but um. All right. Well, other than that, uh, just make sure you like, share, subscribe. Uh, check us out on all the social medias, including patreoncom slash features. Just starts at a buck. Uh, all the links to all that good stuff is in the description below. And yeah, I think that's about it. Sweet dreams, motherfuckers. <laughs>